How the lovelies, how are you all doing? Welcome back to Wawa Crafting, where we learn, grow and craft together. In today's session, we are going to look at a quick craft project. Some time ago, I had shown you with my series in tips and tricks, how to make your own little specimen cards, or you can even call it photo slides. If you do not have a die to cut it out. So I've got very many that were left from previous projects and I normally just put them all together in a clip like this so that I can start working. Now I do have a die here and I feel like working with those. This was done with the die but these ones were all made by hand and I showed you that in a previous tips and tricks video already. I will link it for you below so that you can go and have a look if you want to see how to do this yourself. But in essence, it is very easy. Now, you know, I always have post-it notes next to me. I'm going to show you with a post-it note. If this was your sheet of paper, let's say, of course, bigger to your proportion, the size that you want, and it's sticky, but I'm just showing you, you could fold this over and you can punch a circle from either just the one side or right through. If you do right through, you will have to put some acetate in it. If you just do the one side, you can use the front as the frame of this picture slide. Now, I'll just grab my corner rounder quickly just to give you a better picture of this as well as a circle punch. The circle punch cannot be too big. Now, for this one, I'm just going to, for this demonstration, just so that you have an idea, you can just punch the one side and give yourself some space to, to write something, stamp something. And it's very thin, so it's hardly going through. So you can see I've just done the one side and I can actually, it will now, because it's sticky on the one side, remember it is a post-it note, it will be all skew as I had cut it all skew in the first place. So maybe not the best example, but there you go and you can add anything on the inside still stamp it up and whatever to round the corners you will then if you want to it's optional you can just go in and round those corners now this can easily be changed for a project and it's not wasted you know i always keep the circles that i punch out for later use so there is that now that's just a quick recap here i have some so we will be looking add those in a second. These ones had all been done previously. As you know, I like to have things ready for exactly these moments where I've got a few minutes to craft and I do not want to start a project completely from scratch. So let's see what we have. These ones can be put together. Um, those are still part of that. These were the insides punched out from there. Those were from the previous one. Some little la tags, labels that were left. And these ones were not even colored or stained. These ones I've done with book pages and then punched out. Some are missing a bit of, I'll bring it closer so that you can see, missing a bit of book page there that can easily be trimmed or some lace can be put over it, up to you. So these ones are in different sizes. These I already started stamping on. Now I'm going to use some of these. That one is just coffee dyed paper. You can see that it is all skew, maybe from being mishandled a little bit. We can rectify that by just, there we go. It's not perfect, but once we glue it down, it should be fine. These little punch outs can also be turned into a little ephemera piece, which are really, really, truly useful for those ad hoc things. They come from these little parts there. I punched it from there. So let's keep these together. I think there's one big one and then three of those. Let's see, we're just going to make one or two and to give you an idea of this. Now, we're not necessarily going to use everything. What we can do, because this will be easy, I can show you some cellophane. We can stamp maybe, decorate this. This one you can see, I've got a fingerprint there or maybe some coffee splash on there. Not to worry, once we glue something in, it will be perfect. Grab a piece of packaging material, these little cellophane packages, and you can use that for the inlay. I just want to get the glue running. So just mind me for a second while I put that down. So 
stuff that is probably easily coming out. So let's do the small one and then maybe one or two of the others. We will see. I don't want to have these ones such long sessions. I'll just trim this glue part off. You don't ever have to buy acetate. These ones are perfect. I just trim it shorter or to size. And the rest I keep for the next one. And then just to keep it like that, you can decide whether you want to do the left or the right side. I'm just going to snip it there. So before we add anything, I just want to glue this down and I'll put not too much, just a little bit. And I use Eileen's tacky glue for this. Get the one side sorted so that it doesn't move around. So when you place it, be careful, not too much glue, otherwise it will seep through. But there you have that. And you can see, I'll bring it closer, how the glue is sitting there. What I'll just do with that is take my trusty card and just smear it there. It will dry clear. So this part is open and we will put something in there. Now I've grabbed some. These butterflies are from the Tim Holtz ephemera packs. I've got some from another make as well that I got somewhere. So I just want to find something that will fit in there, which will be gorgeous. You could have stamped on the background. Anything would have been beautiful at this page or stage rather at this stage. Anything would have been beautiful. Now I'm going to just rummage to find a few things for the background. So I've decided on what I want to add. So I'm just going to put a little bit of glue there just so that it doesn't move around because if you don't secure it, it will move around. Now just bear in mind the frame of this so that you can still see everything. There's a bit of space, so I'm going to move this one up a tiny bit. And there's quite a bit of space there. I'll just take this one out. These stamps I'll also show you how to make in the Tips and Tricks series. And then this little one, which is a number, we'll put that there. Just for interest's sake, some glue on the butterfly, not much, just a tiny bit. And then we will glue this down. There we have that. Now for this, I'll just put glue on the frame. That way I know I've got that covered. And remember to put it on top there as well. To the side, in there. Again, not too much, you don't want it seeping through. Now this one doesn't have any stamping on it, but that can easily be rectified if you so wish. I am, however, going to add, I'm thinking about adding something else here because it looks a little bit boring at this very moment. Grabbing the trusty field note stamp set, vintage photo, and I just need something to stamp on, which will be here to my right. And yes, I do use these over and over. And I need just to get the size of this one. Would have been a whole lot easier if I had stamped on this before I glued anything down. Now I'm going to just put that in there. I don't want any stamping on on the acetate, but the rest can go. So let's grab something from here. Field notes, seeing that it's butterflies or a butterfly added, I'm just going to, not all of it is going to be visible, but going to add that there. Field label, and then stamp that part again, seeing that it's there, date, we'll get the date. And that is also, I like that. Now, we'll take a number on here that is available in this beautiful stamp set.
there's some ink now on the block but that doesn't matter as this will not be on our actual stamped image I have this stamp set permanently on my workbench and we need something to just fold that area I'm going to just stamp that there and then Spot just up there, and there we have it. Now you'll see that there's no stamping whatsoever on that. And just to round this off, I am going to add another little stamp just for a bit of color. This one will blow down because this is awesome blue. And there we have number one. So we have that one done. Let's do one more. And I think I will use this one. And I also want to do one of these, I think. We will not have time for any more than that. These ones are quite big. Got one of these cars, photo frames. Let's do that. All right, I'll keep that one for there. But for this one, the same process. Just want to do a bit of stamping before we start. Just stamp it up well. And I'll keep the brown tones as that is. This being skew keeps on bothering me. So let me just trim that, and then pops my uncle. Right. I don't necessarily want to make this a specimen card either, so I might incorporate another stamp set. Let's just get that out of the way for a second. Just want to put these back, sorry. I am... Um, being a bit annoying now but I just like to keep this together that way I know and keep track of the stamps I might use that one and I'm thinking of this so let's see the stamp set I've used before to make my stamps and absolutely awesome really truly an awesome stamp set so I'll be using that one. Doesn't just have to be browns. I'll switch to a different color now. Maybe some red. And I'll use archival ink. Remember to always dab the ink, not to wipe it, because then you take off the ink. Don't be afraid to mix colors. It truly takes your project to a different level if you use different colored inks. And to prove my point, this one is price ribbon. I used it also in a previous video where I showed how to make the postage stamps the full postage stamps that you can have color variations using the same ink and it looks as if you use three different color inks using the first the second and the third generation stamp there we have that one i don't necessarily have to put something in there but i just want to show you the process i follow when i am making these little photo frame specimen cards they're in essence the same thing and then let's get this in there, really 
amazing. Air mail. Going to go for green now. I just need to get the little tin closer by. And this will be Rustic Wilderness. Hey, look at that. It's gorgeous. I think I will leave this one as it is for now. Just add maybe another stamp. And this time, I want a bit of black. You can go on and layer this as you wish. It really is up to your imagination how oh, and where you want to place little bits of detail still so just placing this back and that is then that one for now for the next one I want to use this and I'm going to add some stamping to the background of this one or maybe some paper what do I want I think some paper paper will be a nice difference so I just want to show you the area that we need to cover so it's not very wide I'm just going to make a mark so that I have an idea I want to do it a little bit wider there so I'll trim this paper and for this I'll use the lines of the text to guide me and I'll cut there and then once I know the size of it, I can go ahead and simply add it. So we'll do a little bit wider. So about up there. And this can go into a tag or anything of that sort. Now this needs to be glued down. Just get the text upright. want to make sure so it's a bit short before we close down let's move it up and check yet again still a little bit to the side just a tiny little bit and now it's really gluing down already but a force there to get it moved I think it should be fine now if I marked it properly it would have been no issue whatsoever Of course, there's a bit of glue there, which is not a bother. Now, I want to just get this to one side, maybe get a little label. Part of the collage, yes, I could have used glue stick for this. I'll just get a collage going on this side. But I want it to be underneath this, so before I do that, let's get this sorted. Just getting something else in there. Let's liven it up with a red a bit. smaller one better. I just need to trim a tiny bit off there. Let us see, I didn't do it properly at the time. Now that, and let's see. Maybe I have a tiny butterfly that I can add, which I probably do have. Maybe that will be good. And let's see, what else can I find? I've got another container. And I've got some things in there as well. Maybe a little... don't want to go too big now. Because I don't want to overshadow the, the tiny portrait. I'm just trying to make up my mind at this point. before this glue is drying completely and 
and we can add something on top to complete this little collage. The bead disappears more or less. Just to keep in mind how it will show up. Will be like that. I'll probably keep that one on the outside. So that will be perfect. We still need something here. But that will be rectified. Remember, as I want to keep the number on the outside. Little black ink. And this one needs to be really quite juicy because I want it to be really clear. That's good enough. Good enough. Now for this one, we need to glue this down. No, I'm not putting any acetate in there. This glue is taking forever now to come out. Just glue everywhere. Again, not too much that it seeps out. I think I just put a bit too much there. And the same there. I'll line this up and then we will do the outside as well with a tiny bit of collaging and then we will ink the edges of all three and we should be done there we go absolutely gorgeous i love it already and we're not even finished yet now for this one we want that there i think but we need something else this side so let's look for a different stamp maybe something blue just to liven this up a bit there are so many that some of them are stickers, some I made. You can truly decide how you want this to pan out. It's your collage, you can do with it as you please. I think that is what I will add there. Now, I know that one. We'll cover a bit of that stamp, but it's not a bother. It's just to get that whole collage going, filling in. I want this one in there, just so that it picks up a bit of that dark maroon or dark red. And just for a pop of color, just have that contrast between the parts and then these faux vintage postage stamps and then to make this look authentic I'm just going to not stamp the whole thing or ink it up I'm just going to ink let me see which part that part there and let's see <clears throat> there we have that one I truly love it I truly do quite amazing now just to ink the edges of all three of them just want to close the glue because if i don't do it now i will forget absolutely forget to do that vintage photo let's start with the first one okay we have that one it just rounds it off so much more and then let's do this one that we haven't added anything to, but I just wanted to show you the process. And this one can then easily be transformed with another picture. It can be a portrait, it can be anything. There we go, I kind of like that one as well. I just want to do the inside as well to emphasize the circle. And there we have that one. A little bit more there. And now lastly, this one that is done with a die. I love the stitched edged, our uh, stitched edge. And there we have that one. There we go. I truly love the three of them. They are absolutely gorgeous. Now we didn't use the little B, could have easily been added, or can simply be left. 
I kind of like it there now. Mm, I like it. Let's do that then. We'll add this little bee to this and then we will call it quits for today. A little bit of glue and there we have it. Yeah, I like that. That was an easy project. Thank you for joining me. Go try this for yourself. And please, if you do, tag over crafting on social media. If you want to see more content like this, give me a thumbs up. And as always, I will appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel too. If you haven't done so yet, hit that little notification bell so that you can be notified whenever I upload new content. See you back soon. Goodbye.